Hello everyone, I am Jadeep Singh Chahal. So, uh, if you might remember, we did a video on my uh, 4x4 overlanding camping vehicle. Um, we put that up around two weeks back. So now we uh, uh, we are doing the interior for the same. We've got people working at home. We've got the carpenter uh, woodworking team uh, who are working at our place itself. So uh, we'll do a little uh, interior uh, walk around. And uh, I wanted to do a video which shows how uh, it is actually done and uh, a video of the process. So we are like 30% through with the job and we'll quickly go inside and I'll show you the entire thing. Starting with this is our drop down step. So this makes access very easy and uh, so there's, there's a lot to be shown and a lot to be covered uh, in this video. So there's a lot of stuff around so if you can if you can see we've got nice coverage uh, nice clearance up here and uh, this is the basic living area it's wonderful when uh, you know uh, when we used to look at this cabin area earlier it used to appear to be very small and very congested but ever since we started fitting and mocking up uh, uh, you know the interiors it started to look bigger and it's kind of, you know, we, it's kind of grown on to us. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly brief you through the process that we've undertaken. Um, we, especially for the interiors, we did a lot of research and uh, we, we wanted to do it the right way, first time itself. So around in the last 18 to 20 months, we are now finally, we are through with the entire mechanical testing of the vehicle. We did not want to park it at a mechanics place with the interiors done or half done because that becomes very complicated. So uh, explaining you the basic basic structure, firstly uh, we've got uh, it's called DG glass, security glass, insulation glass, there's a lot of names. There's two glasses of 5 mm thickness in a UPVC frame, uh, you use the, you find this used in houses and all now regularly. So we've got an openable uh, window, we'll, we'll leave that open for a little ventilation. And uh, between those two layers of 5 mm glass is a gap of 8 mm argon gas. So uh, for those who don't know, uh, gas or air is the best insulator. Just an air gap will insulate probably, you know, there's, there's nothing comparable to an air gap insulation. So the entire frame was initially tin, uh, was, was metal, thin MS sheets around uh, 16 uh, and a, very, a mix of 16, 14 and 12 gauge. Uh, what came from the, from the, uh, from the army was 16 gauge. This, this entire was 16 gauge. We added a lot of 12 gauge and 10 in places where we needed reinforcement. So what the woodworking team did, uh, was we've added wood in a lot of places. You 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 might be seeing a lot of wood. Uh, uh, these are not support beams. The, the this is nice old dried wood taken from uh, some of the old uh, door frames and window frames we had at our house, our friends' houses. Everybody is contributed and donated into this thing. So this is nice old hard dried wood. So here I'll explain. Uh, uh, it's a it's a very important but might get a little boring but it's a very very important aspect when you consider a good low temperature camping vehicle doesn't really matter if you're traveling in southern india you, you're not going to face minus negative temperatures there that does not matter but the concept that we have to understand here is that we are going to be using this camper for a lot of sub-zero and uh, negative uh, temperature campings. So a lot of snow trips, of course. So for that, there is something called, uh, there are two concepts that come into play, a vapor lock and a thermal bridge. So two very basic concepts. So uh, I'll, I'll quickly show you what we've done to counter those. So uh, all of these wood, wooden pieces that I've shown, if you can see, they've been screwed in from the side like like this, the metal support holds on to the wood. So now what is happening is all of these supports, this is 8 mm HDHMR, 
paneling this these screws that you show that you can see are not touching any metal so basically no metal part exposed inside the cabin is going to be in touch with the outside uh, area uh, like the outside surface or any conductor for that matter that means any metal that means this entire thing so we have to isolate the inside screws from the outside that avoids a thermal bridge so what has happened here is this has gone in like this and HDHMR is going to go in the wood only. All these lines that you see, we've traced out where all we had the wood paneling and then the HDHMR has been screwed into the wood. All these screws that you see, these are stainless steel, these are SS screws, they won't rust ever because whatever we are doing, this cannot be undone. You cannot open up and un uh, uh, do any sort of repairs. So all of these are to avoid a thermal bridge. And then comes the main part, the vapor lock and uh, the hot case effect, I would say, that is done by the insulation. So, uh, here I can show you. So, that funny, furry looking thing is something called rock wool. A lot of boilers, old time refrigerators, they all used to come lined with this insulation. Uh, the texture is somewhat like uh, glass wool. Uh, but that's where the relevance ends. This is, of course, prickly like the glass wool. Uh, again, you we had to wear a PPE kit and all, all, all sealed up to fill this insulation. So this is a nice two-inch thick layer of insulation. Uh, also, before, before I forget, uh, this is your regular damping, 2.8 mm thick damping that we see uh, in cars. We, we do it for audio and, uh, you know, we do the windows and doors. Not the windows, but the doors with uh, this sort of damping. So we, we put this on the tin metal everywhere. Uh, this avoids the flappy effect and makes your panels feel heavy. And uh, you know, uh, like it avoids all sorts of rattles in the cabin. Also, it does offer you a lot of, uh, some sort of a little bit of an insulation as well. The main idea is to, the insulation part is less, but it has to give your structure a little uh, solid feel. Uh, otherwise, we would have layered it all together. Somebody might ask why it, it's not done the way we do it in cars and why aren't all the panels layered. This is mainly to add to the texture and to add to the strength of the metal that we've used. Now, next, th so this makes our layer number one. So this is 2.8 mm. Then comes this, that is rock wool. Uh, uh, the PUF foam that we see, this is basically uh, has the same effect. But the best part about rock wool is that it is a fire retardant material. So it does not catch fire, rather it, it actually stops a fire from spreading. So this is, you know, this has multiple, multiple benefits. So this has been filled all through. Then comes the 8 mm layer of uh, this mylar bubble wrap uh, thing that we, that we normally use in sheds. Uh, under the shed paneling and all for insulation and big uh, buildings and all. So that has been layered everywhere. And wherever we have, uh, you know, the, this comes as a roll four feet wide. So wherever, uh, you know, the, the four feet ends, uh, like this point or uh, even this point, the silver thing that you see is this. This, is, this, is, this has multiple names, aluminum tape, thermal tape. So, so what this basically does is, it joins these uh, four feet panels together properly and it does not let vapor escape or vapor enter. So basically this is like a big blanket and we're in one big nice uh, uh, blanket or a, in a nice big room with no joints. So this, this is all sealed as a single, single unit. And then on the top we have uh, both side uh, white paneled. This, this has got a white finish on the other side as well. And all these blueprints and all these will come off. That's that's a protective uh, taping on top. So we've got 8 mm of both side white coated HDHMR. So this is not wood. This is like a composite uh, uh, board uh, material. But the best part is as we, there's lots of labeling on this. So it is water resistant, uh, termite resistance, and uh, won't let fungus and all grow. They've 
they they listed it out for you you can you can all see it there so and then even these we've sealed with basic amazon store brand uh, duct tape so this is like this has a mesh inside you can tear it very easily this is the best tape this is your best friend neck after wd40 this is your best friend so we've done a basic basic sealing just to avoid the panel gaps and in case you know uh, there's anything escaping any sort of uh, rock wool particles coming out just to avoid that this is not like a primary primary sealing and what we've tried to do is if you can see the hdhmr has been paneled like this one on top of the other and uh, the bubble uh, mylar thing has been paneled like this so we don't have any overlapping joints that is just to add to the insulation effect because this insulation can only be done once the roof is left that will be done in the end after i explain you the layout you will it will make a lot of sense then uh, once we started the first thing that we did was uh, uh, you know the spatial understanding uh, doesn't come till we have things mocked up and marked out so starting from this corner uh, you can see those white tapes uh, on the, on the floor all of this has been used to mark out what all we are planning so that corner right there will have a 1 foot wide and till the ceiling closet it'll, it'll be opening in two sides and uh, just a foot wide uh, but trust me in a camper it's huge so it'll be a full length uh, closet for all sorts of storage mainly clothing and all then this blue box that you see this has been used uh, this is where the fridge will sit and this is to space out we need almost 10 inches because we are using something called a diesel heater not very common in india but it is very very important for low degree uh, traveling it draws it's a very interesting uh, a piece of machinery as well so it will draw very little fuel diesel to be specific as the name says from the diesel tank and overnight it will use barely uh, maybe 1 liter of fuel and it will keep the cabin warm it, it won't heat it it will keep it warm and comfortable like it, it it will help you maintain a livable temperature when the outside is very very low and uh, so that has to be spaced out there and on top we've got a convertible chest freezer which can be used as a fridge as well by blue star so that will open this way so that's going to be this tall the top again uh, will be used as a counter top we layer it with nice uh, rubber wood so so that there's no space wasted so we'll be having we'll be using that as a top as well uh, because in a camper the idea is to make use of every inch that is available because you already are, are short on space then these two boxes that you can see the, this is uh, uh, this is two seats facing each other the average ideal height for a sitting uh, surface is 16 to 17 inches ideally uh, these are at currently around a foot uh, tall on top we'll have uh, folded in uh, mattresses or the base will be folded in like this two layers of 3 3 inch each on both and that is uh, and this will have a table in the middle that table is going to be dropped in and this entire thing and this gap right here that you see is going to be converted into a nice long 7 foot long uh, uh, bed and the the seating the 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 foam on the seat is going to open up and serve as the mattress so uh, so this is going to be almost 30 inches wide which is roughly 2 and 1/2 feet which is ample amount of space for a single person to sleep and now this this might appear very uh, confusing right now but it is a very very basic and a very simple plan here we've got a uh, slightly more than 5 feet wide bed this can easily sleep two people uh, two people and a child as well and uh, the 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 separations that you see we've mocked up everything before uh, it gets a, a layer of some mica or um, the the size is finalized this is the mock up stage right now so everything is being measured and placed 
just to get an idea of what what we are working with this corner right here the big one is going to be accessible from here or we'll have an openable panel uh, on the bed the bed will be split into two parts uh, here we'll have an openable panel this the plan is to use this only and only for all the bedding storage bedding is always very very volumetric and you can't leave it lying around so this this uh, entire space will be used as a as a mattress hold i would say uh, the long partition here this is around 7 inches wide uh, this will have your uh, pull out drawer the vertical drawers that will have two layers like a jar and bottle stand that we we normally see in all houses in your modular kitchens so that will be on rails and uh, this should give us a lot of storage space this will serve as the basic ladder and uh, storage for uh, your kitchen supplies basically the one next to it is something we saw in a lot of campers worldwide and that was a very very innovative in a very simple way in a camper you have to keep it very very simple because you can't undo things you can keep adding stuff but you cannot undo stuff so what we've done here is we've taken basic simple crates and we'll be using these crates as a storage and this crate is around 7 inches tall uh, 15 inches wide and uh, almost uh, 18 19 inches long so these will have a shelf of their own every crate will be placed individually and this will serve as a miscellaneous storage uh, uh, miscellaneous storage uh, uh, section and it will have an openable uh, cover in front also when we when when designing a camper we have to keep one thing in mind that the entire house is going to be moving so crate space just like that the minute you break you're going to pop out and fly right off so everything every drawer every shelf that we have will have a small strip of wood in front that will make sense once we're through with it but that is to that's like a positive stop it won't let it roll out with breaking and all all we have to do is lift and slide and then roll it back in that that we'll keep it very basic we're not using a lot of drawers in here we're not using uh, a lot of movable parts and parts that tend to fail so this part is going to be closed from the top now is the interesting bit uh, you see that open area behind that is our uh, rear axis that is the rear hatch it's pretty big it's almost 3 by 3 feet and that can open all the way down or you can hold it in the middle we plan to use it as a kitchen top as well and this entire area is going to be our uh, storage with access only from behind from from the from the rear hatch will be there'll be storage on that side there'll be storage right here this this entire section is going to be serving as a storage so when camping or when traveling in you know overland in a vehicle there's a lot of stuff that you don't want to keep uh, in your living area you'll have dirty chairs you'll have a cooking stove you'll have maybe cylinders and you know a lot of off-roading supplies you'll have your recovery gear that is all dirty and the inside is going to be clean like a house so you don't want it inside so that will close the access to that area from the top we might keep a small cover just in case of an emergency to access that otherwise that area will have no that storage will have no contact with the living area this where we are is the living area and now this is the uh, this is going to be the kitchen area if you see we've marked out everything on the floor first so that we have a basic idea and you know we are not here um, all the time to be with the carpenters so we marked it out the day they started their work so that there's no confusion because doing and undoing stuff it takes a lot of effort and energy and that's why we marked out everything so here uh, on the top we'll be doing a nice polished countertop and we've got a flush fitting steel sink this is a 16 by 18 inches sink the water spout will come right here the plumbing will go uh, from the outside and this area is going to be where we'll place the butane uh, uh, cooktop and that we can store here so the idea is we don't want to leave a cooktop installed we didn't want a hob type fitment because that basically eats up your countertop area so it will be serving as a countertop even the sink will have 
a cover made from the same wood that we are going to use for uh, the countertop. Only in case when you want to wash the dishes, we'll be using that. Uh, only when we need to cook, we'll be using the butane uh, thing. Also, we've got these organizers for drawers. We'll have a couple of drawers here. This is again, this is all IKEA stuff. This goes in very nicely in the. Uh, this is your utensil stand. Otherwise, we'll have a couple of big drawers on this side for the utensils. And this big looking white box with the interface on this side. This is our. Uh, um, this is our inverter. So what this does is this takes in charging. Uh, from the solar, uh, we've got two panels uh, on the top. So this will take in charging from the solar panels uh, and supply it as AC current. In the back, in the living area, we are only using AC supply, same as home. Uh, your all, all your cars have a DC supply, but here we're using alternating current AC supply because the appliances are very cheap and easy to find. And uh, the wiring, the switches, everything is what we use at home. So it makes it very convenient and we've got two big uh, uh, batteries they're, they're installed under the floor with access from outside and uh, so this will take charging from the solar panel and it will be supplying it inside this will also regulate also has a readout that gives us how much charging is going in how much current is being drawn and it, it also um, manages uh, you know the the batteries they've got charging from the solar panels and also from a 135 watt uh, ampere uh, yeah, alternator that we've added so uh, the engine is running two alternators right now so one of them is purely to charge the batteries so this will be managing all of that it's got a very nice readout and um, keeps you updated with whatever basic uh, electricity requirements th that you're going through this as you know this is a upvc door and this is our entry and exit of course this box right here the one marked out in white where you see a lot of uh, tools and supplies this corner is going to be the washroom so we are using a very very basic setup we'll be using a shower uh, we've got a in the last video i showed you we've got a big 120 liter tank of water so that will be our uh, that will be supplied to the shower area even in the uh, in the kitchen area as well uh, so this is a 32 by 32 inch, might sound very small, but it's bigger than your shower cubicle in the gym or, you know, um, in, in, in commercial spaces. So this is going to have a chemical toilet pot that will be, we'll be placing that inside and securing it inside. And the same area is going to be used for a shower. It will have an enclosure and an entry door on this side. And... Uh, we're keeping it very basic, just a simple shower, uh, and the toilet is going to be a chemical toilet, so the disposing of is not a problem. It's got its own storage for grey water inside, and uh, very compact. Uh, I'll I'll show that once we are as we progress with the build. And this on on the other hand, this little section right here, this is the main main part. This is the crawl through. So this is to access the the front. The driver side, we we didn't want that, you know, to enter the living area, you have to exit the vehicle and go, you know, all the way around. You have to have an access from here as well. So the main challenge that we had was uh, there's something called flex. So since we have a ladder frame and the front cabin, as you've seen from outside, is mounted there. The rear is a separate unit. So both the units will flex as per their own dimensions and uh, volume. So this part, like the rear box, could not be connected to the front. Like we could not weld it. If we weld it, it is going to break or crack when, you, when you're off-roading, when you're off-road, when you're, you know, even, even on the road, there's a lot of flex happening, which we don't normally notice, but that will break it. So what we've done is, like, you, like you've seen in trains, when two boxes, uh, you know, two bogies are connected together, there's a rubber attachment that goes in uh, mates like this. So we've used kind of this, kind of a similar concept. We've got a very nice thick belt rubber that uh, that is this one right here. So this rubber bit has, it, it goes like this and uh, it is sealed from both sides. 
so both the parts are connected but that rubber has enough extra length so that it can flex as well so it keeps flexing it will keep flexing when we move but it won't be much of a trouble so the the both the cabins are connected yet not attached physically that way so that is the main thing now coming to the last bit which is um, storage and storage boxes this bit we'll have to keep it uh, clear because this is of course access and otherwise will bang your head there starting from here we'll have nice uh, boxes which will open this way will extend till here the chimney will be integrated in here itself and this is where the bed comes and we'll have like a partition so two nice big boxes here same on the right side starting from almost this this area we'll have storage boxes till here i think we can fit something around four boxes so they'll be attached here on this wood bit they'll go like this so almost uh, 16 inches deep and 10 inches uh, this way and uh, they'll, they'll they'll offer us a lot of storage space that bit above the window if you can see in the back all the way we are going to use that as a nice bookshelf we'll put all our books there and the idea is to use this side as uh, uh, as your uh, back support for the bed like 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 this way and so that you can see that window as well and that one as well when you're sitting and on the windows we'll be using using nice homemade curtains we didn't want any fancy looking blinds because it gives a very officey officeish look so we'll use nice fabric curtains which makes it feel more like home and uh, same for this window and uh, yes and then the top is going to be as thin as possible just to hold the insulation in this this top bit is going to go in in the end after again a layer of insulation uh, same bubble sheet and then the top will go in and uh, the boxes will hold it in place so we can't really be using more space vertically because this is barely enough to clear the you know clear my height at least and for the flooring we are still planning what to use it has to be waterproof and it has to accommodate the flex a little so there's quite a lot of options we uh, are planning on doing the entire interiors in white and all the panels that is all the openable stuff all the windows all the access hatches they will be done in uh, made out of wood i picked a big log of deodar wood from manali uh, around 2 years back it's been sitting at home ever since so it's a nice big 10 by 10 inches and uh, it's 10 feet long so we got two pieces of 5 feet so we'll be cutting out wood panels from that and we'll be using that in in the entire thing so the only two colors for the interior will be white or light colored polished wood like a clear coat thing no other colors and white makes it look very big and we'll be using those thin profile lights the coloring or the color of the light we've decided for 4000 kelvin which is your normal sunlight color it won't be white it won't be yellow so it'll be like a nice warm tone and and it may it highlights the interior very well and of course i forgot both these boxes will have storages every single corner that we can find we are doubling it as a storage space of course because that is the main main constraint when when you're in a camper so i believe that's about it if there's anything you else you want me to cover if there's anything any questions that are there please please do share your uh, feedback and thank you so much thank you